Okay, let's build an AutoML system from scratch. Now, what do I mean by from scratch? I've made bread from scratch, but did you see me growing wheat? No. So we're gonna do this to a reasonable level. I'm gonna be using Python, I'm going to be using TensorFlow, Keras, PyTorch, this sort of thing. I'm gonna use all the same packages that I would have used if I would have built the machine learning from scratch, but I'm going to put together some mechanics that actually does a lot of the legwork for you and makes it very automatic. And I'm gonna do one more that I have not seen really in the AutoML space. It's gonna actually generate the code to do it. It's not a model itself where you it learns like an auto cure is, where you get now a new model that it's learned for you and then that's what you do your classification on. It's going to be more like a winning solution from a Kaggle where you get all the code spewed out to you so that you can then take it as a starting point and go yourself. So when I asked you what you wanted from this channel, one of the, or not one of, the top comment was that you wanted to see more complex projects. Well, this is one of them. And I'm gonna have several of them going. How do I know which ones that I'm going to push and move forward? Well, you're gonna vote on them. How do you vote? Comment, click that like button, smash that like button. Is that what YouTubers say? I think, I don't know. But let's, uh, let's go, let's show you what I'm going to create. This is gonna be created in a series of videos. So it's gonna get bigger and bigger and bigger as I go. If this is one of the things that you told me to do. Now this is a very simple AutoML system. Look how relatively short it is. I mean, it, there, there's, there's a decent amount going on there, but it is at the point that you can run it in Colab. I haven't split it out yet into Python files and made it a package. So you're seeing this at the very beginning. This is really the seed that I plant for new projects as I start to jump into them. I'm gonna start with something in a notebook, I'm gonna run it in Colab or whatever I want to experiment with, and then I start to take it more into a package. And we'll, we'll get there actually quite quickly if I move this one to the, to the next level. And again, that's, that's up to all of you. So look at the top here. This is really the only coding that you have to do for this. I have three sample data sets. I have the auto MPG, which is your classic regression data set. I have Fisher's Iris data set, which I mean, everybody's heard of Fisher's Iris data set. It's classification, picking from three uh, different types of iris. And then CRX data set, that is a binary classification. So those are really the three big domains that I wanted to deal with. And if I take this to its logical extent, we'll be doing time series images, really everything there. The Iris data set, if you haven't seen it before, it is four measurements on irises and then the species. And there's three different types of iris. So we're gonna fire it up for iris. Let's go ahead and run that so that they're defined. I trust it even more since it's not written by Google. This is the code that's used to analyze the data. This looks at the iris data set or whatever data set we've got it pointed at. It checks to see if there's missing values. If there's missing values, it decides if it needs to fill those, uh, fill those in either by taking the median or the mode, depending on the type of data that it is. It looks at the distributions of each and decides if it's going to standardize or normalize each of the numeric columns. And then finally, it deals with categorical values, just dummy variables for now. So it automatically determines a lot of that. Let's go ahead and just run that part. This is really just defining the function. This is the part that actually generates the Python code for your model and your evaluation, which is going to be the starting point for a project of your own. Heck, you could do, use this already to do some of the homework in the course that I taught. So don't, don't tell my students. And if you're one of my students watching this, uh, don't tell yourself. And then here we have it. So we're going to go ahead and analyze the data set. You can see here, it has detected the sepal length with all of these. We've calculated the mean, the standard deviation, median, mode, max, and all of these. I, obviously there's no modes on these because they are numeric value. And there's nothing missing in the IRIS data set. It's a pretty easy data set in that regard. 
Now we're gonna generate the code. And the code that it generates currently is Keras. I wanna make that a switch. I wanna make it so that you can generate the code for either PyTorch or for Keras. And that will make it very easy for my course because I'll be able to create these sort of project files and when it analyzed it, it created this JSON up here. That's your project file. That's your metadata that describes the data science project that you're actually creating. I think I can get it so that maybe 70% of my examples, I just define this and I'll be able to just generate a Python, PyTorch or Keras example from it. And I'll just update the generator as there is new code available from PyTorch or Keras. I might even use some sort of like a GPT model or something also for some of the code generation, but for now it's all procedural. And then this is the output from it. I'm just gonna go ahead and copy this and pop open a new notebook, paste it into here, and we'll just go ahead and run it. And you can see what it's doing is it automatically generated the appropriate encodings, pre-processing for each of these columns, created a, at this point, very basic neural network for it, but it did automatically figure out it's using categorical cross entropy and that the final output layer should be a softmax because it is a multi-class classification. So it really just sets up all of this stuff automatically for you. Now, again, it's dealing mostly on the pre-processing side at this point, but it does create a valid neural network structure. You can tell it to use early stopping or not use early stopping. I'll probably add cross-validation and other capabilities there. I'll also add some tuning automatically, depending on how much compute you wanna throw at it, to figure out more optimal structures for that neural network. Or you could specify transfer learning, at least transfer a structure of a neural network. Probably more useful on NLP and computer vision kind of things, but you can see it ran and it trained and automatically put a couple of accuracy evaluators for you. You can see the accuracy is at 97%, effectively log loss is 0.10. So a pretty accurate model. You just automatically now have the code completely set up for a very, very simple model. I can certainly take this more complicated and this would be something I would use in conjunction with my course. So let me know, is this the kind of project that you think you would be interested in? Let me know in the comments what you think, what you would add to it. I do wanna keep it very much with the idea of sort of pure Python and generating the code, not black box auto MLing it and keeping it quite quite understandable so this is it other ideas I would have too is I may want to have it automatically wrap it in a flask container a docker image even so that you would have a deployable model that you could go through out on AWS Lambda or any similar uh, architecture. So thank you for watching this video and if this is something you'd like me to see go further let me know in the comments and subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss other interesting projects that I will be looking at on this YouTube channel. Have a wonderful day.